It was uh, actually Krishna was trying to reach me as uh, his my mail got bounced and uh, he could not uh, get into the session because he did not have the ID to get in. So I just shared it with him then. Okay, so this templating, it is kind of a plug and play device. Anyone, anyone can actually uh, start using the uh, template as a base for their development. We'll see how they can use it as a base for their development. So the template, it could hold workflow scripts, sample data flows, conditionals, etc. So you would put an, uh, an ETL architect. It is, uh, it is definitely not in a big role, ETL architect. It is uh, more of the technical lead position who will define uh, based on the user requirements he will he will define the template should be like this it is more like the the chef in the kitchen is the first person who will decide everything when you are going into a competition he will decide what all he needs and where to place things so that it is easy for him to uh, cook faster and easier so it's the same way we'll have some workflows, we'll have some scripts, sample data flows, conditionals, etc. And I see uh, Krishna joined in name of Balaji. Uh, Krishna, let me know when you are able to hear me. Krishna, do you hear me? Krishna, do you hear me? Yeah, there was uh, some miscommunication. I couldn't send you the uh, access code. Your mail got bounced and now I have sent it again. So if you want, uh, you can stay on this or you can join as uh, yourself. That is fine. So we are proceeding with the, uh, with the session. Like today I have late comers and I am repeating the same time, uh, same thing uh, multiple times. Uh, but nothing I can do about it. I had three people on time and three people late in the meeting. So, I mean, whenever you join late, it is you are going to waste your time and also uh, the rest of the people's time. At least make sure that you arrive at your computer 10 minutes before so that if you if you have any trouble, you can actually call each other or, or get some help so that you can log in easily. So, please make sure uh, from tomorrow, guys, because... Uh, I mean, from next week at least, because it is a time waste for everyone, right? And it is also painful for me to keep repeating the same thing 100 number of times. But just for today, I'm going to uh, repeat the same thing. Guys who are already heard about it, please bear with me. So what we are discussing is, when I start working in an organization, all I'm talking is how to set up my environment and where to start my work. So I am proposing a solution saying a company or an organization should have a definitely called something called as a template. A template will guide you and keep you consistent across uh, the organization, consistent across the developers. Your work will be at least externally be the same. Though the recipe you cook inside could be different, we are talking about the kitchen stadium actually. We are not talking about the recipe because every one of you are going to cook something different. But then we are laying out a structure so that everyone does it in a proper way and will not step on each other's toes. So a job in data services is not a reusable object as it is at the top of the object hierarchy. The purpose of a template is to maintain a standard job format across the organization. And it is a plug and play object that can be renamed or replicated. You have two ways that you can make use of this job template. You can, uh, you can rename it on your, your purposefully. I mean, you can rename it as required and use it or you can replicate it and then also rename it. There are two ways. I will show you how to do that. And it holds a, a job template will hold a number of workflows, data flows, scripts and some conditionals. When I say data flows, they are actually dummy data flows. It will not have any data flow under it. But it's more like the naming convention of data flow will be sitting there. So it holds custom functions that can take care of, of building custom metadata in uh, job status, uh, load status, and EDW parameters if you have any parameters. So 
these two tables which i am talking about job status and load status are nothing but you are designing your own metadata tables which means you will create two tables in your database which we are going to do it today i will show you how to create a table in database because there are some people who are not very uh, uh, very fluent or very uh, very good with the database so i will also show you that but for now the the template will have two tables one at the job level other at the lower level it could be workflow or data flow and you will have a parameters table which will be used so that instead of typing anything you put it in the database and the job will run looking at those parameters uh, parameters in a kitchen stadium you can compare it to the secret ingredient so you not to know the secret ingredient until you start cooking in the same way parameters will be you will not know until the runtime what the parameters you are going to use so that is going to be kept in a, a secret place that is the edw parameters if you want me to compare it with the real time so you can also refer to ds object naming conventions uh, conventions for renaming or replicating a job workflow and data flow so in general at the organization level everyone would try to put up a document that's called as a object uh, naming conventions document data services object naming conventions so everyone would follow the same naming convention it is more like yesterday i was telling you gender wise uh, there are some feminine names and uh, some some are masculine names and uh, you would also have uh, kidding names like uh, if you have a uh, nickname it will be very short and sweet so in the same way we will design and uh, we will give some naming conventions that are to be followed so that it makes everyone's life easier when they start designing a job you know what what is a data flow what is a workflow where to find it which table to look at it everything will be definitely known to you so we are trying to understand that uh, and uh, and put it into a document so that uh, in an organization everyone follow the document instead of giving their own name so the recommended job format in general in an organization when you develop a job you would see some format like this there will be a try there will be a catch block if you are a programmer you know what will be a try catch block for example try catch is kind of a security guard behind you it's the same example i always tell because that makes your uh, makes it understanding very easy what we are trying to do what we are catching that will be a big question mark always so it is more like think about in a job in a job a data flow is the most uh, most uh, important ingredient and when 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 it is called as a most important object there should be uh, he, he is the vip of the job so there should be some special security for him so this try and catch are the security guard behind him try will be monitoring him all the time if he try to go in a wrong route or or i mean we can say data flows are blindfold they are like uh, the the horses with the blinder data data flows will not look at uh, look at sides they will keep proceeding very straight and they would uh, try to uh, they, they would they would try to do whatever is defined they don't have their own intelligence so whenever there is a failure who will take care of it the guard behind him is the try block the try block will be behind him and whenever there is a problem it immediately moves him to the catch block and it will stop the data flow it will quit the job it will inform the user so anything you develop in data services you will have to put in between try and catch only then the error code will be captured and only then you can uh, you can make it an operational uh, uh, operational job because you beautified it you have to accept uh that you uh that there are some issues so it is been captured into a table or data services by itself puts the metadata and you can view it so any job should be something uh format like this you have a try a try block you have a catch block and then you have an initial script and then an end script initial script is is nothing else than as i told you we are creating a parameter table it is the secret ingredient we are going to look into the init uh, script very closer because that is where you are going to put the entire logic while you initialize a job uh, 
Okay, I wear it one time. Uh, there was a little disturbance, but then please make sure, guys, uh, that you mute your uh, mute your phones or microphones. So the initial script and end script, how they work is you are going to initialize all the parameters, global variables. Or uh, uh, I mean, when I say global variables, it is more of of data services terminology. In a generic sense, even in a generic sense, even we can say. Yeah, the, the the initialization script will have the secret ingredients. So all you will have to do is while running a job, you will say this is all you will have to put into the job. I mean, it is the same way. You have decided a recipe. So now initial script is the place where you are going to say, I'm going to use so and so vegetables for my curry. I'm going to uh, put the so and so spices for my curry. How much spice I'll have to add? Everything will be decided in the initial script. Because as I told you, data flow by itself is blindfold. It cannot, it cannot have any kind of intelligence. So we'll have to do this initial script so that it gets that intelligence while it is running. And then you'd you'd see something called as a workflow on on a very high level. So the workflows, as we have extract, transform, and load, as we are doing an ETL job inside a designer, you are more an ETL uh, developer, guys. When I say data services is not just an ETL, it is externally, it is not just an ETL. But inside a designer, what you are going to do, it is exactly the ETL process. You are going to extract, transform and load. That's all you are going to do as a designer. And that is the scope of uh, uh, a job. The rest of the things is, is on top of it, data services provide them as uh, excessive things that will help users to monitor what they are doing. But internally, it does extract transform and load that's all it does so what i try to put here is not mandatory sometimes you may not require a transform step you can always skip it why you don't require a transform step because you already have the required data in your source in the same format that you are going to move it to target like let us say for example i have an oracle as a source oracle as a target all i am doing is i am doing a conversion or a migration the object definition is the same. The object in the source means the same. The object in the target also going to have the same definition. So when ha they have the same definition, when they can uh, do the business in the same way, you don't need a transform step. So you can skip the be be between layer. Only if you have something that you'll have to transform and make use of a temporary table or a local table, you can use that. Else you can just skip the step and you can uh, proceed with the extract and load step without a transform. Because sometimes transform step is implicit. So this is kind of in a recommended job format, but it is not a mandatory format. Because without anything, guys, you can still cook, uh, cook, your, cook your food without any instructions from anyone. You can uh, do your own cooking, own recipe. But when there is a chef, there is a technical lead, he will try to put his intelligence, his experience and say, this is what I am recommending or I am proposing. So better maintain the same when you when you try to uh, work on your job. So job control. Why do we need to control a job? Let it run. So job by itself is kind of a horse, guys. It is not even the horse. It is the actual chariot, which will have more than one horse. When there is more than one horse, you must be a good charioteer, else the chariot won't run properly. So you are going to be in a battlefield when you are designing a job. It is more, you in a battlefield what we are trying to do. All we are trying to do is keep uh, keep your chariot moving and the, and the data flow, which is the actual, uh, the actual, uh, uh, what we call him, the, the, uh, the warrior. He is the warrior actually. So he will be able to uh, fight properly only when you have a good control on the chariot. So. The job control, it is required. The reason is the job control, you are defining it as a charioteer. Because we have too many horses tied in there. There is a good horsepower for your for your chariot. So 